I'll all be sorry when I invent the world's best tasting cola. When it comes to cola, there's Coke and there's Pepsi. And oh yeah, there's also RC. Once a contender, here are 10 reasons why RC Cola failed. Consumers chose other brands. Where's my Coke? I need a Coca Cola. Coke, Coca. Who actually consumes RC Cola these days? Uh, you tell me. Drinkers of Coke and Pepsi have been asking the same question for years. RC Cola stayed on the sidelines, a quiet blue and red can that seemed content to just be. In the protracted marketing conflict that started in the 1970s, the major cola brands battled it out via celebrity endorsements, rewards promotions, an onslaught of advertisements, and even a race into space. The truth is that during its more than 100-year existence, RC has enjoyed devoted fans. It has strong origins in the South. Internationally, RC is present in places like Estonia, Thailand, and Iceland. In the Philippines, it's now one of the most popular soda brands. However, it can never truly compete with Coke and Pepsi, but it did at one point. Unbelievably, Royal Crown Cola was once among the beverage industry's most innovative businesses. It was the first to conduct countrywide taste tests and to popularize Diet Cola. Given its lengthy and innovative history, RC deserved to be a better brand of soda than the one it is right now. RC didn't do nearly enough in a field where marketing is the lifeblood. However, lack of initiative wasn't the only reason for its failure. In addition, it was a case of terrible luck, poor decision making, and a few other falters. Beaten out by other sodas. Not good enough. First off, when it comes to colas, RC has never really been even a respectable third. Since the beginning of the 20th century, Dr. Pepper has held that position. The chronology looks like this. In small local pharmacies, Dr. Pepper and Coca-Cola were each individually developed in 1885 and 1886. Both were being bottled and distributed across the country by 1891. The original Pepsi wasn't created until 1893. It wasn't even given the name Pepsi until 1898. Earlier versions were simply called Brad's Drink, and it wasn't even offered in bottles until around 1905. That you didn't know. Although the Royal Crown Company has been around since 1905, RC Cola wasn't created until 1937, and they never attained the revenues of the other three cola companies. The first low-calorie beverage, Diet Right, was released decades before Diet Pepsi or Diet Coke. At one point, Royal Crown's Diet Right was the most popular diet cola in the U.S. However, despite their best efforts, they were never able to pass Dr. Pepper for the number three spot among regular colas. The Royal Crown Corporation barely possessed 5% of the soft drink market at their peak. So how did things end up? Well, smaller businesses that struggle to compete constantly appear to get swallowed up by bigger businesses. That would be Dr. Pepper in this instance, with the company acquiring RC. And after that, everything was essentially resolved. The two major brands are Coke and Pepsi, while Dr. Pepper is a unique third option. They won't promote RC Cola the same way, because really, the most they could hope for would be to move it up to the number three slot, probably by stealing sales away from Dr. Pepper. However, RC Cola still has its followers, and Dr. Pepper keeps it around because those people will will continue to purchase it. Diet soda with some controversy. It's diet, dude. Diet soda doesn't give you diarrhea. Royal Crown made a lot of improvements in the soda industry. The firm produced the first nationally accessible canned sodas in 1954 and larger 16-ounce bottles in 1959. In addition, Royal Crown introduced the popular diet soda, Diet Right. Later, the company released RC100, a caffeine-free variation, and Diet Cherry RC, a cherry-flavored variant. The diet sodas were first developed for diabetics, but they quickly became popular with weight watchers as well. Although Diet Right, which debuted in 1958, is hailed by current owners, the Dr. Pepper Snapple Group, as the first diet soft drink, there had previously been several diet sodas on the market, but none on the level that Diet Right attained by 1962. Unfortunately, the use of cyclamates as a 
sweetener in the diet soda caused controversy because it was subsequently prohibited in 1970 <laughs> owing to health concerns. No! Just go home. No! The health issue led to a decline in sales for the RC firm since Diet Right had helped Royal Crown win the top place for diet soda. Lobbying by sugar companies. I have both type 1 and 2 diabetes. Ow! A major blow to the RC Cola brand was no doubt the fact that their sweetener was declared unsafe. Poison! It's thought that interference by the sugar industry was the primary cause of the cyclamate reaction. A lobby group contributed $600,000 to the research that put an end to the use of cyclamate. Both of these studies, which entailed subjecting animals to considerably higher concentrations of the chemical than any diet right or tab drinker could ever consume, are now viewed as contentious. In one of the trials, for example, you would need to consume more than 500 diet drinks each day to obtain the same amount of cyclamate that the rats did. Today, the European Union, Australia, South Africa, and other nations utilize cyclamate as a common sweetener. Even though it is safe to eat, according to scientists worldwide, the findings of the 1969 study are still relevant today. There are over 45 countries to this day that still outlaw the use of this sweetener, including the United States. Show your support by hitting that like button. We do appreciate it. Now, let's keep going. The show goes on! Yeah! They diversified into strange industries. It looks like you're putting all your eggs in one basket. What would you have me do? One basket for each egg? Even if the Royal Crown Corporation had some bad luck, its actions over the years didn't make issues any better. The business started to diversify after vowing never to devote so much resources to a single product again. It purchased Tech Sun and Adams Packaging to producers of fruit juice. Then it made the genuinely strange decision to buy seven home furnishing businesses. Diversification. It's unclear precisely what the soda producer saw there, but by the middle of the 1970s, the production of mirrors, picture frames, floor tiles, and cabinets accounted for about 25% of Royal Crown's revenue. The fall towards decline quickened. In 1976, Royal Crown acquired the fast food franchise Arby's. At least the purchase made sense, since it would allow the company to sell its drinks via soda machines. The franchise was mishandled by Royal Crown, Victor Poe, Posner, a multi-billionaire businessman, acquired Royal Crown in 1984, after it had dropped the word cola from its name to become Royal Crown Companies. Posner ran Royal Crown for nine years, during which time he decreased the marketing budget and fought with executives over the course of the business. He was found guilty of tax evasion in 1987, and the authorities began looking into him for insider trading. Just another of RC's continuing struggles. RC dropped the ball with marketing. Mark, are you going to talk about abs again? While Coca-Cola and Pepsi were pouring millions of dollars into an unprecedented marketing arms race, Royal Crown was focusing on cost-cutting and producing lampshades. The two cola giants started competing against one another with taste tests, TV advertisements, new goods, and various other promotions in the middle of the 1970s. Bill Cosby appeared in Coke's advertisements, the king of pop, Michael Jackson, appeared in Pepsi's. When Pepsi learned that Coke was sending a specially designed Coke can onto the Challenger space shuttle in 1985, they acted quickly to rig together its own can and compelled NASA to let it fly too. Both cans failed to function as intended and the astronauts grumbled about the ruse. Nevertheless, the two businesses had literally been to space. The Cola Wars appeared to consumers to be about two titans out to eliminate one another. However, the truth was that the exposure helped them both. Any brand that weren't the two giants saw a major decline in sales. Since they weren't competing, nobody was even thinking about RC at this time. With their small advertising budget, RC released several basic TV commercials with individuals sipping from bottles before pausing to smile for the camera. In conclusion, <laughs> For the majority of people, the more than 100-year-old brand was practically invisible. Coke and Pepsi controlled the grocery aisles. Look at me. Sure. I'm the captain now. 
For RC, things just continued to get worse. As the two cola behemoths grew, they signed agreements with merchants that assured them plenty of shelf space. They started paying slotting fees, a practice that is still used today, and provided special discounts to supermarkets. Coke and Pepsi were slicing up the retail sector and shutting RC out in the process. So in addition to losing out on advertising, RC was also losing out on retail outlets. RC did make an attempt to rejoin the conflict. After a change in ownership, it was given a sizable budget for advertising and development. In 1995, it launched RC Draft, a premium soda manufactured with cane sugar, in an effort to boost sales. Unfortunately for RC, no one noticed what made the beverage so premium, and within a year it had been taken off the market. Okay, that is sad. Cadbury Schweppes acquired RC in 2000 and added it to its Dr. Pepper Snapple group. In the ensuing years, RC released other enhanced colas, but no new items were able to move the dial, and there are currently no RC products with the fame of years past. The word cola belonged to Coca-Cola. I, I said that. Mr. Jackson, that is enough. But I said it first. The road was not easy for RC Cola, and a legal battle was fought while the company was expanding over the use of the word cola. It was in 1923 that a judge ruled with Coca-Cola, stating that the word cola was effectively theirs. My idea. It was my idea. This had a severe effect on sales for other brands that used the term for their products. Eventually, the ruling was reversed, and companies were again allowed to use the term cola to market their products. But by that time, a lot of damage had already been done, especially for RC. Known as a third-rate brand. Two thumbs down. Today, Royal Crown claims its beverages are sweetened completely with cane sugar, while the diet-friendly Royal Crown Cola Slim beverage contains some stevia for 50% less calories. Today, parent company Keurig Dr. Pepper is in charge of a variety of sodas, including 7-Up, Canada Dry, Crush, and alas, the mostly forgotten RC Cola, among others. Despite its devoted fans and presence in Chicago pizza joints, no RC Cola product is ever anywhere near the bestseller charts. It doesn't help that much of the pain is self-inflicted. While the brand spent money on a multi-year agreement in 2013 to support racing car driver Marco Andretti, advertising has always been a weak point. You had one job. Just the one. And controversy then erupted in 2017 when a rogue RC Cola Twitter account aroused the ire of both ardent fans and the irate Dr. Pepper Snapple group. It's no surprise that the public has always viewed RC as a cheap and less authentic version of soda when compared to Coke and Pepsi. The soda industry is on the decline. You don't care for soda! No, no, we don't like soda at all! Being the best soda company these these days is not something to take pride in. As customers choose healthier options, the whole soft drink business is in decline and has been for more than a decade. Full calorie soft drink sales have decreased by more than 25% during the last 20 years. Instead of competing against one another, Coke and Pepsi are struggling to remain relevant in a country that is turning away from their iconic sodas. They are diversifying into juices and snacks, creating new zero calorie soft drinks and investing millions of dollars in advertising that associates their brands with joy, nostalgia, and other feelings that may go beyond concerns about one's physical well-being. Smart, and smart. Less soda consumption is undoubtedly a positive thing. A full-calorie ice-cold cola, however, will always be appealing to many people, and most consumers are likely to choose a Coke or Pepsi, whether it's a routine occurrence or a rare treat. It is what it is.